Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Parallax Abstraction, and welcome back to Retro Flashback, showcasing gaming's roots for a new generation. Yeah, so today we are going to be taking a look at our first ever game for the Neo Geo platform. I actually wanted to take a look at uh, the Neo Geo for a little while, and always got distracted by other stuff, but no longer. This is a platform... well, man. I'm going to do an episode on the Neo Geo platform as a whole someday because it is, I would say, one of the most historically interesting platforms that has ever existed. It is just, man, the history behind this thing is incredible, but that's for another discussion. So, the Super Spy, yeah, this was actually a launch game for the Neo Geo, and I remember playing this game along with... Magician Lord, Nam 1975, and I want to say Baseball Stars on a four-game MVS cabinet. Uh, the MVS was the arcade version of the Neo Geo. That what's interesting about this system is that it actually had an arcade version and a home equivalent that were both available at the same time. And we first played this in the arcades at a, a neighborhood arcade called the Fire Button in my neighborhood. And this blew our minds at the time. The Neo Geo, from a technical standpoint, was largely unprecedented in many ways when it first came out. And this game, I this game is not fondly remembered in the in the annals of arcade gaming history. And I think that's kind of a shame because. I mean, yeah, it's it doesn't hold up terribly well, and for an arcade game it was an odd design choice, but I actually really, really like it because, well, frankly, it's unique. The one big thing with the Neo Geo, especially later in its life, is that it was kind of exclusively a fighting game system. Fighting games were what the platform tended to experience the most success on, and as SNK continued to, frankly, support this platform long after they likely should have stopped, they tended to focus almost exclusively on fighting games for it, and some of the more creative stuff tended to get ignored. And the mo- Man, these scientists look weird. And th this, this game was from the launch era, which is when a lot of the, in my opinion, the most interesting stuff came out. So the concept is pretty simple. Uh, you are a spy, 007 inspired, clearly, type guy, and you are trying to stop this terrorist organization that is operating in all these different bases and whatnot, and the general idea is supposed to be, uh oh. The general idea is supposed to be that they are destroying, they are terrorizing and killing thousands of people with bombs that they're planting in various places, and your goal is to go in and take them out. And that's what you're doing here. So, what's unique about this game? Well, number one, it's a first person game, which, when this game came out, first person was a pretty new genre. And there wasn't a lot out in it yet, and it was still relatively unknown, and in arcades it was unheard of. I mean, first-person games of, especially of the combat variety, were pretty much a PC thing at that point. And to see something like this in arcades was unheard of. There has been very little like this before or since, to be honest with you. And that's one of the things I find interesting about it. Secondly, from a graphical and technical standpoint, both in music and sound effects, for a launch game, this was in incredibly impressive. The graphics and the sound on this on this game were really kind of bar none at the time, and I remember just playing this and kind of staring at it in awe. It was really incredible. And secondly, or or thirdly, for those keeping track, what I think was really neat about this is that it was a first-person combat game, but it wasn't just shooting, as you're seeing right now. You can shoot, you can punch and kick, or you can knife dudes. So you had a lot of combat variety, and the game also had very light RPG elements in it, which I thought was really cool. As you're seeing here, when I'm taking these dudes out, I'm getting experience. And as I get more experience, I will actually level up my character and get higher statistics. It's very rudimentary. The leveling up is automatic. You don't really get to choose traits to level up or anything of that nature. So it's, it's, it's you know, it's... This, a hardcore Dungeons and Dragons RPG, this is most certainly not, but that wouldn't have really worked in arcades. And that all sort of adds together in a really neat package, and as you can see, 
I mean, it is a linear game. There is, the, the levels do have linear progressions through them, but you have all these different rooms that you can go into and you can choose to or not. A lot of the rooms just have scientists who dispense advice in SNK's trademark, hilariously bad, badly translated English. Some of them will actually give you power-ups and items, and and some rooms just have enemies that will appear and kind of screw with your day. Not unlike this dude. Now I knew that because the, the room placement is static. It doesn't change. Yeah. I'm a super spy. And that's kind of the, the core idea of it. It's but but this is what I really like about this game is that it's it's different. It's very very different as arcade games go. And I always have a lot of respect for anything that's different. So this guy has a magical machine gun for me. Oh yeah. What what? Oh jeez. Look at that. Love it. God, all these scientists do look really weird, though. What else would you build a bomb in secret for, dude? Like, for reals. Oh, I hate those guys. Those enemies don't always appear. They're kind of random, and they're really nasty buggers. So I just leveled up there, which is what that... Uh, that signifies. So as you can see, I have slightly higher statistics now. The, the what I will say, the pro uh, a major problem with the leveling system in this game is that it often does scale the enemies to sort of counter what you're leveling up with. So though you are leveling up, it doesn't necessarily it doesn't necessarily mean as much as you might think because you are dealing with higher enemies to sort of counter that. So, there were also some very rudimentary mechanics in this game, like, Gow, my god. What the hell are you, dude? Man, whew. That is having a bad hair day. Or maybe a really good hair day, depending on how you look at it. There was also very mild weapon degradation mechanics in this game. So, you're going to see here with the knife. The knife looks really useful, right? Insta-kill on some low-level enemies. But, here's the thing with it. You're going to see this very shortly. That's a you see the knife there is... I don't know if that's blood or rust. In either case, it's not terribly realistic looking, but... And you see there, after killing another couple of guys, it got darker. So the knife degrades, and the more you... You really... The, the way this game would trip up a lot of people early on is that... What's up, buddy? The way this game would trip up a lot of people early on was by lulling them into a false sense of security because you would get the knife, you would see what it did to dudes, and you were like, holy crap, I'm just going to use this all the time. And then all of a sudden, within a couple of minutes, you're like, oh man, why does this knife suddenly have about as much killing power as, you know, a plastic spoon? And <laughs> that would be why, because it degrades very quickly. And of course, you have guns as well, and guns have their own advantages, like that. Or you can use them to destroy the background. I don't know why you have to check your map only in certain rooms, but there you have it. Um, but of course, guns have very, very limited ammo, so you have to be careful with that as well. So really, you're going to be spending a lot of your time with your fists and your feet. Why does the scientist say that he's stronger now if he healed me? Okay. <laughs> it's SNK English, don't think too much into it. <laughs> so, and your goal is to get through these levels and, well, get to the end of the game, kill the boss, and save the world. And yeah, this is very much an arcade game, very much designed to suck money from you. This game is brutally hard. It's possible th just through pattern memorization and being strategic. I would imagine you could beat this game in one credit if you wanted, but you got to be some kind of crazy superhuman for that, in my opinion. It's, it's, this game is very difficult, and it's designed to be credit-fed, without a doubt. You really need to... Power of knife is less. Is less the more. Yeah, thanks for telling me that now. 
So it's, a, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a fairly, fairly simple concept. I mean, it's, it's like a lot of beat 'em up or action platformer arcade titles, except it takes place in the first person. But in a way, I think that's cool. I mean, I think this game was really unique in terms of what it did. When the thing I really loved about the Neo Geo platform is that when it came out, SNK clearly wasn't sure what type of games they really wanted to focus on with it. So they kind of went to a lot of their teams and just went, hey, we got this crazy new platform, make cool stuff for it. Just take neat ideas and, and put them together. Oh, thanks, dude. Oh. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that, but sure. Let's murder some dudes, too. And SNK just kind of went to their teams and went, yeah, do cool stuff. And we got a lot of interesting games. Some of them were, were, were fairly rote and generic, but some of them, like this one, were really cool. They took a, their new hardware platform and decided to do some neat stuff with it. And if you look up retro reviews of this game, generally they're all pretty poor because they're kind of like, oh, it's pretty simple levels. And oddly enough, the graphics and sound both tend to get beat up a lot on this game. And I'm not sure why, because for the time... Oh, dear. I'm going to switch to my gun for these dudes. Because for the time, I think they were actually pretty impressive. For, for Neo Geo launch, this was... Uh, the, the, the graphics and sound in this... Dang it. The graphics and sound in this game were pretty impressive. Especially with a lot of the Mode 7 effects and other things going on like that. They did some pretty neat stuff with it. And the gameplay, yeah, generally revolves around pattern memorization and it's... Whoops. I think I got spotted by a camera. Yes, I did. There's no doubt that, that the mechanics are not exactly complicated. This is not necessarily a game with an ocean's level of depth. But I still have fun with this. I mean, I think it's... I think it, Okay, I gotta stop walking in front of that camera. Clear out of here. here we, oh my god, your forehead! Dude, you... Ah, uh, yes. I forgot about that. It's been a while since I played this game and gotten this far in it, so I'd forgotten about how the uh, cameras work. And yeah, the the game definitely requires credit feeding. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's you got to be some kind of crazy person to be able to beat this game without dying a lot. But the thing that that I I don't like about the way a lot of retro reviews view these titles is, I mean, it's an arcade game. That's the way arcade games were. And yeah, part of the appeal of the Neo Geo was that it was a home system as well, and the home versions of this game was no easier. But that was the idea. It was supposed to be, the Neo Geo was supposed to be the arcade experience at home. And that's what this was. I mean, you kind of knew, <laughs> if you were going to spend the crazy amount of money that a Neo Geo home system required, then one would hope you knew what you were getting into. And I, I find it odd. I I still think this game is, for what it does, I mean, it's, it's basic, it's rudimentary, but it holds up all right, in my opinion. I think two of brothers, guys? Yeah. We basically have to get some stuff off these dudes. So the idea is is, is simplistic for sure, and the, the gameplay is, is certainly simplistic, but this game did a lot, and it did it in a neat way. It had first-person combat in the arcades, which was very unusual. It had weapon variety and mechanical variety as a result, and it even had some RPG leveling, level up mechanics, which, I mean, very not, not unheard of in arcades either, but not seen very often, and certainly not in a game of this nature. Games of this nature really kind of weren't even a thing in arcades in general. Sit down, you. And for that reason, I think this game is, is somewhat historically significant. I mean, if you... If you were to sit down and play it now, I mean, sure, you could you could feed your way through it pretty fast, I imagine. Oh, thank you. That's going to help. But I think this is important, not just because the game, I think, is still reasonably fun in its own way. Also, that, that soundtrack is infectious. Oh, jeez. Dude, that was just... That was uncalled for. 
But I think it's a testament both to what was neat about the Neo Geo at the time, and also how it varies with this compared to its later life. And I mean, we'll we'll get to that in in uh, either future episodes when I talk about the later games, or when I eventually do a platform episode on the Neo Geo as a whole. Whoa, Blue Ninja. But. The Neo Geo was a system that had at long... The Neo Geo was a system done with heart. I mean, the idea of the system as a whole was so utterly ridiculous in general for, for the video game market as it was at the time. And it was clearly a hardcore passion project designed to make something... something premium at a premium price. And I really like the fact that when they launched this game, SNK just kind of... It really feels like SNK went to a lot of their teams and just went, hey, do, stu do cool stuff. Give, give people a reason to buy our platform and to do something and, and show them games that you couldn't get on competing systems at the time. Give, give them stuff that you can't get on the NES or the Super NES or the Genesis or anything like that. And at least at the launch of the platform, that's most certainly what they did. There was really nothing like this on any of the other systems. And I think for that reason, it really shows what the Neo Geo could have been had SNK continued to foster that idea rather than just sort of doubling down on fighting games, which is, which is what they ultimately did until their... Well, the original SNK's demise. And, yeah, kind of unfortunate. But, yes, that it gives you a rough idea about the Super Spy. This came out in 1990, and it was published and developed by SNK Corporation. We are looking at the Neo Geo MBS arcade version, but this did come out on the AES home system as well. It was basically the same game. There was also a version released later for the Neo Geo CD platform. Unfortunately, I don't know if there is a legal way to play this right now. There, uh, It's not out on any of the virtual console systems that I've seen. That dude looks really... It's not out on uh, any of the virtual console platforms that I'm aware of, and there have been SNK compilation collections for consoles, but I'm not actually sure if this game was among those. But if you can find it that way, that's that's. Uh, it, I think it's a neat thing to, to check out. I still think it's kind of fun, and it it was just very very different. And anything that's different in arcades is something worth celebrating. I think. My name has been Parallax Extraction. Thank you guys all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.